The Adventures of Frank Raith, starring Tom Collins. <laughs> The war changed many things, the face of the earth and the people on it. Before the war, Frank Race worked as an attorney, but he traded his law books for the cloak and dagger of the OSS. And when it was over, his former life was over too. Adventure had become his business. The Adventures of Frank Race. Join Frank Race for the adventure of the vanishing president. It was the first of the seventh at polar grounds. Dodges at bat, score tied. Time for anyone to sit forward with anticipation. And I was doing just that when there came a sound that startled even the Brooklyn Bank. Hey, Frank! There was no mistake in the voice. It belonged to Mark Donovan. I watched him work toward me through the crowd. Using a combat technique that reminded you of the way he drove a taxi. Oh! Oh! Race, please, you've got to call in the Continental Underwriters. No, let it wait. I want to see the end of this game. No, 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 I can't wait. A guy named Joe said they had a scene right away. Some kind of a crisis. Jim Drew, chief claim adjuster for Intercontinental Underwriters. A man with the instincts of a ferret and a gaze you could use for sandpaper. He looked relieved when he saw me. I was beginning to think you weren't going to make it. I almost didn't. I was watching a good ball game. You've tackled a lot of foreign service, Race. How about another assignment? Oh, just in the middle of a hot series. All right, what's boiling? We've got another of those mysteries. Vessels disappearing without trace. Three of them inside a month, all on the same shipping lane. Same operators? No, a different company in each case. You have a lead? One. The SS Lucy Wilkins sails from here tonight. She's for South American ports. She's casting off without a cargo in her hold. Each of the others sailed the same way, empty. I see. I want to emphasize something, Race. Those vessels disappeared completely, ship and crew. It may have been piracy, it may have been mutiny. We can be pretty sure it included murder. So? So when the Lucy Wilkins sails for South America tomorrow, like to have you aboard. Well, Lucy Wilkins displaced about 4,500 tons. She rode high out of the water in the moon made sequins of the barnacles that blistered her home. The softness of the night was doing her a favor. But even at that, she looked what she was a sea going tramp that had seen better days. Uh, how soon will we get rolling? And from the looks of this scow, I would say Roland is the right word. Well, that ticket's say the 14th. They don't mention the hour. That's tomorrow. We're going to sail tomorrow. Hello, what, are we what are you doing aft here? Well, we're passengers. We'd like to know what time the ship sails. You'll have to see the master about that. Well, we'd like to see him. He's not aboard right now. Perhaps we'd better speak to the first officer then. I'm the first officer. You'll still have to talk to the skipper. You're just brimming over with cooperation, aren't you? Would you consider telling us where we might find the captain? You know a place called the Mariner's Rest? It's a few streets over from here. Well, I imagine we can find it. He'll be there if you want to see him. Not that it'll do you much good. By this time, he's probably stinking drunk. You didn't have to look very hard for the Mariner's Rest. You could hear it for blocks. <laughs> The joint is throbbing. Well, what are we going to use to get in? A shoehorn? That is always room for more. Come on. <laughs> now, this is a way to spend your last evening ashore. You want to lean against the bar? Do we grab a table? Well, take a look, my boy. To get even close to that bar, call for a bulldozer. And as for the tables... Is there a spot to sit down? Here, we'll make room for you. Well, thanks, but uh, we don't want to intrude. If you don't, someone else will. I'll send it for you, fellas. Yeah, much obliged. I'm Frank Race. My friend's name's Donovan. I'm Ken Hanlon. 
this is tomorrow, the quarter. Hello, Ray. And you too, Donovan? Black eyes and yellow hair. Real yellow hair. You see that combination once in a lifetime. A blonde Latin is always arresting. This one was enough to start a ringing in your ears. Yes, yeah, she's real, Ray. Spanish father and a Russian mother. Should happen often, shouldn't it? Spanish father, Russian mother. That accounts for your name. Your name intrigued me, Ray. Do you manage to live up to it? Once in a while, if I'm lucky. Hey, look at that! Dancing to that music, it would be fun. Well, it'd be a little like establishing a beachhead, but if you take a chance, I'd be delighted. Good. Come on, Ray. In my arms, she felt the way she looked. And that was money for candy. But we didn't do much dancing. In a jam near the door, I was suddenly strong-armed free of her and swept out into the street. You got to come with us quietly, chum, or would you like to do it unconscious? There were three of them. The one who had spoken and a pair of silent partners. Moving casually, they herded me half a block to a waiting sedan. A few minutes later, I was pushed into the office of a warehouse, aromatic with the smell of coffee. Well, here he is, Rosario. Just like you wanted. <laughs> Good work, Burns. Stick around. Rosario bulked about 250. He seemed to have hair everywhere, except on the top of a skull that gleamed beneath the glare of a single hanging light bulb. Why did you want to take that boat? Boat? Do not fool with me. I would not like it. And, of course, you have the advantage. Uh, let's start all over. Ask me again. Sure, I ask you. Why did you want to take that boat? You're speaking of the SS Lucy Wilkins? You know what one. Well, I'm uh, reluctant to admit it, but uh, I've been a little run down lately. My physician thought I could use a rest. Sea voyage seemed to be the answer. Uh, people like you don't travel on slow freighters. Well, the doctor said I could use a long rest. Sure. You need a long rest, eh? <laughs> We could give you one without much trouble, could we not, Burns? <laughs> sure, without no trouble at all. So what do you say you start talking, Race? He was ready to turn it into a rough party. And I could assure myself of only one effective move. To get me standing under the hanging electric bulb. The only one in the room. So I eased a hand up as if to scratch my chin, shot it higher and yanked. The light! Somebody get a light on! Somebody! Oh. Watch the door! Watch the door! There's nothing like confusion when you're in the minority, whether it concerns politics or a brawl. While they groped, I ducked and got clear. A little while later, I elbowed my way back into the Mariner's Rest. Grace, where you been? I was looking for you. So was Tamara. No, I took a walk around the block for a breath of fresh air. <laughs> Are you kidding? We get all the air we want on this trip. And, uh, Lace, I got some news for you. Guess who's sailing on his ship with us? Mm. Tamara de Cordova. <laughs> How do you like them apples? The SS Lucy Wilkins still rode high out of the water next morning. But where there'd been a dock on her port side the night before, there was now only open sea. A lot of it. All rough. At 11 o'clock, Mark still occupied his bunk. As he prophesied, the Lucy Wilkins rolled, sashaying from trough to trough in a manner both feminine and diabolic. So as I walked the deck, I walked it alone. Hello, Ray. Hello. I wasn't sure you'd be in circulation. Oh, I'm a pretty good sailor. You look well, Ray. You... You look unbelievable. Thank you. A woman usually needs the dim light of a man to draw a compliment like that. You don't need anything. With this breeze in your hair and that look in your eyes. Hold it a second. Right out in broad daylight, too. Yeah, oh, go away, Hanlon. Go away. Oh, no, Ray, let him stay. After all, we're going to have a long voyage together. We had dinner at the captain's table that night. The next morning, I came awake slowly with 
difficulty to the realization that Mark was shaking me. I felt stiff. The stretching didn't help any. His body seemed full of pulses, and all of them throbbing. Come on, come on. <sighs> you just don't want to wake up at all, do you? No. You know, I feel like four nights in a Turkish bath. You must have got a worse night. You. Got what? You kidding? Don't you know the feel of a Mickey when you've had one? Mickey? Well, that's it. I've been drunk. Both of us. I'm as fluttery as an old maid at a wedding. But I figure we'd better get moving around, huh? They must have put it in our food. Why would they do it, right? So they could take on a cargo at sea. And a cargo they didn't want us to know about. Oh? Well, we need a little exercise to snap us out of this fog. Why don't we get down to the hold and make you a little inspection? <laughs> Much in here, either. No, wait. Turn the flashlight over to the left. Hey, bullseye. What do they got there? That's it with artillery. Very efficient looking 75s. I thought them things was only good for junk. Against a modern army, yes. But against ordinary citizens, they'd be lethally effective. Well, what do you know? They picked up about a dozen of them. No wonder they drug us. Come on. We've seen enough. You know some race? Kind of looks like somebody wants to start a war somewhere. Yes. We're traveling with the heavy equipment for it. Right to the end of the line. Yes, we were carrying a cargo of evil. And just four days later, shortly after nightfall, the Lucy Wilkins drew into her first South American port of call. Mark and I were sweating it out when... Okay. May I come in, Ray? Of course. I, I must speak quickly and to the point. Why did you take passage on this vessel? I've been wondering when someone would ask me that. Oh, I'm not just being curious. Something has come up, something of critical importance. Well, I represent a maritime insurance company. Ships have been disappearing along this sea lane. I'm here to find out why. You must leave this vessel at once, otherwise you will be murdered. That's a dashing thought. Oh, I'm entirely in earnest, Ray. The ship is carrying arms for the start of a revolution in my country. And they can't afford to try landing them with us still alive. Hmm. Ken Hannon overheard them making the plan. A machine gun has been set up on the bridge. They intend to murder most of the crew as well. Tomorrow, we've got to make it fast. We're only four miles offshore. Oh, Ken, tell Ray how serious it is. I think I already know. And how do we leave the ship? With the black knight will lower a boat. Well, you'll never get away with it. Not unless someone creates a diversion. I can make enough noise to satisfy that requirement. Yeah, no, Mark, I've got a better idea. I'll go forward and let the crew in on the picture. <laughs> that ought to stir up plenty of diversion. You'll be taking a big risk, Race. That machine gun is trained right on the forecastle bulkhead. I couldn't leave this ship knowing those men were to be murdered. You three go to the boat. And as soon as the scramble starts, lower it. <laughs> Topside, I slowly and carefully work my way forward. Thankful for a cloud formation that switched off the moon. Everything was quiet. Too quiet. I had just reached a point beyond the bridge when... What the night? Who are you? Hawkins. Abel Seaman. Either ruddy whispering. All right, Hawkins. Listen. You've got to be murdered tonight if you don't leave this ship. You and the rest of the crew. Blimey. I'm not just talking. The ship's going to land arms tonight. Contraband. And dead men tell no tales. You don't have to say no more, mate. We know about the guns. I'll... Blimey, they've turned the light on us. Duck! Hawkins came to safety. I was sure of that. Because the slugs were following me like hounds to a scent. I twisted and spun to the rail. Then it was into the drink for me. Return to the adventures of Frank Race in just about one minute. And now, back to the adventures of Frank Race. I came ashore dripping wet and without shoes. And yet I attracted little attention. The city was bright with lights, but few people walked its streets. 
And I turned in the first hotel I came to, confronting a clerk who stared at me with what seemed to be genuine concern. You made a can. You get all wet. I get wet is about the size of it. I need a room in the location of a shop where I can buy a pair of shoes. The room we have, and with the bath. The shoes will have to wait until mañana. Uh, senor came on a ship. Well, let's say I came most of the way on a ship. Ah, uh, ships. They bring trouble to my country. I remember being here once before, several years ago. At that time, the city always seemed gay, far into the night. And now there is no gaiety. No reason? Any moment it may come, the revolution. And always that is bad. A man may lose his life or his wife, his child. Who knows? Some revolutions turn out all right. My country had one that worked out fine. Not this one, senor. This one will bring only bad. This one will bring... Go ahead. Uh, I've talked too much. I've always talked too much. And the senor will come. I will show him to his room. <laughs> I had another pair of shoes by 9 the next morning. At 10.30, I'd located Mark Donovan and Ken Hanlon. The three of us sat down to breakfast together. Boy, was I worried about you. They told me that harbor's full of barracudas. What happened to Tamara? We lost her right after we came ashore. No, that's a loss a guy could mourn about. Lost her? She just slipped away from us. I guess she had her reasons. Hanlon, you're a newspaper man. Why are you down here? To cover an impending revolution. As if you didn't know. You know, I may be wrong in my impression, but the man in the street doesn't seem to want a change in the government. I guess you can't blame him. Since the court of us and the boss have had plenty of food and not too much hardship, they're happy with things the way they are. Wait a minute. Did you say T. Cordova? El Presidente. That's Tamara's name. He's a father. Well, who's leading the opposition, Hannah? Might be a lad called Quizado, but nobody seems to know for sure. Everything's been kept beautifully undercover. How soon do you think it's coming? Well, I filed a story on that this morning. I told him it could start any minute. Um, what do you plan on doing today, Race? Why don't you kick along with us? Well, why don't we all separate? See what we can find out. We can meet for dinner. I went out and did a lot of walking, stopping whenever I ran into a person who looked willing to talk, which was rare. I found myself regarded with about as much confidence as a drunk in a wine cellar. Fear stalked the streets of the city. Suspicion moved beside it. I went back to the hotel late in the afternoon and found a little surprise party. Come in, Marie. Tomorrow. Close the door behind him, Burns. Don't worry. He ain't getting away this time. Well, Burns and Rosario. I seem to encounter you two every so often, don't I? You're friends of yours tomorrow? Rosario is in my father's cabinet. He's head of the police bureau. I see. And is this an official visit? You came ashore last night, Race. Why didn't you make a report to the police about the Lucy Wilkins being in the harbor? When I was swimming, I saw him swing her about and put out to sea. Well, you must have seen it yourself. Could it be that you did not want our government to know the ship was here? Probably should have notified someone. But I'd been through an ordeal, and I didn't think of it. Let me take him over. I'll make him talk. You content with your existence, Burns? I like it all right. Why? And stay out of my affairs. Why, you... Oh! When you get up, you uh, might try again. You forget it, Burns. He's too good for you. What's the story on all this? I seem to be under suspicion for something. In New York, I asked you why you were sailing on the Lucy Wilkins. Never got around to telling me. Well, Tamara knows why. I told her while we were aboard ship. You never showed me your credentials, Race. Well, here. Take a look at them. If I have been wrong... No, you're upset. you got a right to be jumpy. Well, he seemed to be in order. Why did you not show them to me in New York? I didn't care for your methods of interrogation. Oh, Race, you must forgive us. This revolt is not of the people. And the hour it begins will see the end of a democracy in this country. Well, can't you stop it? Can't you fight it? Oh, we are not a rich race. We don't have the money to buy arms such as have been shipped here by the others. Well, then, why is it worth so much to them to effect a coup? The tribunals of the World War didn't find all its criminals, race. There are many of them still at large. 
Men who would like to begin over again by getting control of a state such as ours. Mm. You know, they're ready to move at any moment. The president was seized by them this morning. Your father? Yes, my father. All our chances lay with him. Without him to rally the people... Well, if they're holding your father, why don't you rally the people? They need someone to lead them, that's plain. You mean... You address them by radio. Tell them to resist in your father's name. Tell them it's only a few who try to take over. Tell them that if they stand firm, it can't happen. All right, Rafe. I'll do it. How about taking in a sight tonight, huh? This town looks dead on the outside, but there must be one or two joints that know how to get up steam. Mm -hmm. Cafe del Toro. I'll meet you lads there later. I have a report to make out to the company. Uh, who knows where the local cable office is located? Not me. Hanlon? The desk clerk can probably tell you. Or we can look it up in the phone book. Look, fellas, I think you guys are going overboard about this revolution deal. This country's too sleepy to break out in a rash like that. Mm, calm before the storm, Mark. I've seen it before. When those things start, they're pretty vicious. <laughs> Where are you? Here. In your arms. Oh, Rafe, I'm in trouble. Take it easy, take it easy. It's Rosario. He's with them, Rafe. He showed his hand when I tried to follow your suggestion about addressing the people. I got away only because of a servant's loyalty to my father. But the enemy have followed me, Rafe. Well, then we won't stay. It shouldn't have come. It only puts you in danger. There's a clerk here who'll help us get away. Come along. You can go upstairs to the Cafe del Toro, and there will be people there, and you will find safety in the crowd. Oh, gracias, amigo. Go with God, senorita, and you too, senor. What next, Ray? Well, they hunt us. I think we should do a little hunting on our own. Do you know where Rosario lives? Yes. I want to locate Mark and Hanlon. They're around here somewhere. And we might be able to use a little help. I'd like to see the inside of Rosario's house. So this is the house of the chief of police, huh? Eh? What a stack of masonry. Makes them Hollywood movie mansions look like a Third Avenue boarding house. Did you notice that aerial on the roof? I noticed it. High-powered transmitting type. Well, now that we're here, what's the program? Well, we'll go through the place. You and Tamara take the lower floors, Mark. Hannah and I will comb the upper section. Let's meet here in the living room in 30 minutes. Hannah and I located the radio transmitter in a small room on the second floor, just off the stairway. And when we got back downstairs, Mark and Tamara were waiting with a white-haired, distinguished-looking man of about 60. I was introduced to the president of the country. Got jail cells in this layout. And that's what he had to press behind bars. That ain't one for the book. What about guards? There was two of them. But you know me in the gloom, right? I laid them out like linoleum. <laughs> and then I trust them up. <laughs> do I rate your approval? Ah, uh, you do. Race, my father insists that in that drawer, in the desk, there is some kind of plan for the revolt. The desk is locked, but... Yeah, I'll get it. Hey, look through that window. Car driving up outside. How many in it? Rosario and, and five others. Yeah, I got it. And here's your plan. Oh, that's it. It shows the places where the arms are hidden. And here comes trouble race right now. So, here you are. Get your hands up. Oh, no time for you, Rosario. Oh, oh for you, Burns. Bark, where's Hanlon? I don't know. Come on. Watch out, there's more of them. <laughs> Both down, you and that OSS shoot. No, just winged him. Now, let's get up the stairs. All right, he goes with Hanlon. He's at that transmitter. It only needs his signal to touch off the revolt. Hanlon, a newspaper guy? Yes, Hanlon. Now, here's the door. Uh, lock. Stand back, Mark. I'm going to blast it. Get away from that cable, Hanlon. I'm going to send the signal if it's the last thing I do. Throw that gun, Ray. Throw it. Hit. Ah. Ha! Bullseye. <laughs> nice pitch, Ray. Yeah, pick up my gun, will you, Mark? Yes. Well, that takes care of Hanlon. Ray, are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. 
There's your kingpin on the floor tomorrow. He's just about to signal the start of hostilities. And if your father works quickly with that plan, he can round up those arms in a hurry. Ellen, I can't believe it. How'd you know he'd be up here, Reg? He claimed to be a newspaper man, a correspondent. He mentioned filing stories to American newspapers. But earlier tonight, when I asked for the location of the cable office, he didn't know where it was. Well, what do you know? Uh, you stopped them just in time. Oh, Reg, you saved everything. I'll never be able to thank you enough. <laughs> Oh, yes, you will, baby. Yeah, but we can talk about that later. Adventures of Frank Race, starring Tom Collins with Tony Barrett as Mark Donovan, comes to you from Hollywood. Others heard in tonight's cast were Naomi Sher, Theodore Von Eltz, Wilms Herbert, Joe Duval, and Harry Lang. This series is written and directed by Buckley Angel and Joel Murcott. The music is composed and played by Ivan Dittmars. Be sure to be with us again this same time next week for another dramatic chapter in The Adventures of Frank Race. Art Gilmore speaking. This is a Bruce Ells production.